r slash ask reddit what should you not duck with hippos you will die this reminded me of a story my dad told me my dad grew up in rural kenya once while he was swimming in a lake he said he saw bobbing coming towards him extremely fast he realized it was a hippo and immediately began swimming for his life towards the shore. The hippo did not give up chase and continued to chase for him a while after. When he told me this I remember thinking ha I mean it's a hippo what can it do and after researching hippos a few years later. Nope nope nope. Hoping it would end with it never quit chasing me so eventually I gave up. I married it. And that is how your mother and I met. Electricity. People get complacent because it's all around us but that shit will kill you stone dead without a second's pause if you duck around with it. I work in IT and my employer occasionally tries to get me to work on electrical stuff. I tell them that I know enough about electricity to say that I don't know enough about electricity. On another note, I recently lost a cousin of mine to a downed power line. He and his friend came across a bad car accident and he jumped out of the car to go and help. He was instantly killed as he stepped out. Sadly, I never met him. First rule of CPR courses these days is to observe the situation for these exact things before moving close. Edit. Sorry for your loss. He sounds like a good guy to instantly try to help like that. The IRS they got Capone. They'll get you too. The police. The feds. Rival gangs. No one could stop Capone. Until the IRS was summoned. The only people to be able to shake down the mob is the IRS. That should tell you everything you need to know about the IRS. Uncle Sam wants his duck in cut. Bit of a downer but definitely don't duck around with opiates especially mainlining that heroin cut with sketchy fentanyl. I don't think I've ever heard of a story that started with using heroin that ended well. Dave Grohl's music career. Synthetic weed. Duck that stuff. Edit. I hate the name too. It is misleading. As someone in a strictly illegal state, this is just another example of how cannabis legalization can benefit us and put an end to overdoses and even addictions that could have been better prevented. On a side note, I have been reading all the stories and the replies throughout the day, and I'm not only intrigued, but sorry for any losses. Lots of wise words in this thread. Thanks for sharing everyone, and happy smoking. Please just buy regular weed that shit can kill you. How can you tell the difference between real and synthetic weed? Like, what if your dealer sold it to you without telling you? Apologies if that's a dumb question lol edit. Okay, a lot of answers lol. Thanks everyone, colon. And for the record, I have never had any intentions to try synthetic marijuana. I was just curious about the difference. Garage door springs. An installer working on my garage said let me show you the meaning of potential energy then he showed me his missing thumb. Is it really missing if he can show it to you? Perhaps it was just an illusion. Wu-Tang Clan? Edit. Well. Thank you kind stranger. Edit with a vengeance. Well that's a ducking lot of internet points. Wu-Tang Clan damn there goes my karma grab. Yeah the most recent person to do this is going to jail. For fraud. Snapping turtles. I was going to say Ouija boards, but you're right. Snapping turtles will duck you up. Production servers. Everyone has a test environment. Some are lucky enough to have an entirely separate production environment. Edit. Whoosh count 12. You don't test in prod. Moving water. Water is heavy, heavier than people realize. A cubic meter of water weighs a little ton. Consider that a tsunami might readily be 30 meters high and moving at a speed of 30-40 miles per hour. And you can see just how destructive water can be. But that's a tsunami, a freak event. What about seemingly calm water? Well, there's possibly shit going on beneath the surface that you have no idea about. If you've ever tried to fight your way out of a rip current, you'll know just how fruitless it can be to try and resist. Open bracket. Side note. Don't try and swim through a rip current. Swim parallel to it the shore for a while. Then try to get back to the beach. You will not get through it otherwise. And you'll just tire yourself out. It takes astonishingly little moving water to sweep you off your feet. According to the Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries, a grown man could be knocked over by one foot of water moving at 6, 7 miles per hour, by knee deep water at 4 miles per hour, and waist deep water at 2, 6 miles per hour. 
That's slower than the average walking speed. If there's a lot of water and it's moving the way you don't want to go, duck you. Buddy, you're going where it says, not the other way around. And then there's the strid at Bolton Abbey, where both of these facts combine to make a death trap that looks like a simple brook, a fast moving river, and all the water that involves, gives way to a very deep but very narrow chasm that seems almost tailor made to pull people under. While numbers of fatalities are sketchy, local rumors persist that everyone who's ever fallen into the strid has drowned. Every. Single. One. Moving water is nothing to duck with. Edit. Correction before I kill Timmy in a riptide. Thanks to you slash Jimba Fisher 2010. Edit. Correction before I accidentally send Timmy to Bolton. Which might be even worse. Thanks to you slash Homdogcut. Side note. Don't try and swim through a rip current. Swim parallel to it for a while. Then try to get back to shore. Swim parallel to the shore, not the current. When little Timmy went to swim, to while away the day, he jumped for joy and boyish whim, to splish and splash and play. The water's smooth, the lad opined, and wiped his brow of sweat. And so, he said, I'm so inclined, to dive inside the wet. But Timmy wasn't born with wit, or grasp of flow and tide. He only saw the face of it, and Timmy ducking died. Brown recluses. We have a bunch in my neighborhood and they are great to have around. They eat mosquitoes, flies, etc. But you do not want to be on the business end of a brown recluse bite. I'm an Indian who lives alone and keeps to myself mostly. My first thought was what did I ever do to someone to seem so intimidating? Until I realized you were talking about a spider. Maybe stop biting people? Dudes with cauliflower ears. At the risk of sounding like an idiot, I have to ask. What is a cauliflower ear? Edit. Today I learned getting repeatedly hit in the head gives you ugly ears and earns you a I'm a badass badge of honor. Edit. Tile it is caused by constant rubbing, smashing, and grinding of unprotected ears on mats too. It's a permanent swelling of the ear you get for being the hardest dunt in town. A bloke with a cauliflower ear is a bloke that's been punched in the head a lot. They're typically big lads who like brawling. But you also get them in ordinary fellows who do full contact sports like rugby, boxing, MMA, etc. This one isn't too bad. But there are some proper grim ones. It's caused by a blood clot that hardens I think. If it's not lanced and drained in time, it'll harden and then the only way to remove it would be to chop off half your ear. For rough types, it's a badge of honor. Firearms if you do not know how to properly and safely handle and store them. Unfortunately, too many gun owners fit this bill. It's not a toy. Stop flagging me at the range. Turns around with gun in hand what? Exactly. All that my finger is the safety bullshit. A moose with cubs on the other side of the road. Cubs. I know. No idea why I said cubs. Or bears with cubs. Or a mother asteroid and her intergalactic offspring. People with face tattoos. Not because they're all intrinsically badasses. Simply because they're obviously incapable of considering the future ramifications of their actions. I.e. Killing you. People who handle your food. I duck my waitress if I want it. You're not my boss. I'm a waiter. Even if you're an absolute dong. I will never touch your food. And I think that applies for everyone I work with. It's like the golden rule of the job lol. Airport security, especially in those countries where the security is decked out in army uniforms and have visible weapons, they will duck you up. Power tools, I do woodworking as a profession, and you absolutely do not want to duck with them. They were meant to do only one thing, and that's cut grind and tear through shit that's 10 times tougher than your flesh and bones. They're not forgiving, and they won't. If you duck with them or use them irresponsibly they'll bite back and they won't give a shit what happens to you. And believe me, they can have extremely severe consequences. Edit. If anyone was wondering I'm only 18. Been working with power tools ever since I was 7. I do woodworking professionally both traditionally and making props for cosplayers. I've seen a lot of shit when it comes to accidents. I actually spat blood all the way up my arm working on a lathe. Stray screw to both my fingers when assisting to stop it after I flicked the off switch. Learned my lesson after that. Devastating things can happen when you're careless. 
table saws can seem safe but if you act like it can't hurt you and don't use it properly have fun having a board drag your fingers into the blade and have a board shot into your stomach. Seen it happen. Don't duck with any power tools unless you know how to properly handle it. More than one condom on at a time. No, you should use two condoms at once. It's safer, and I'll explain how. You put on one condom. It's pretty safe, right? But there's always the concern of it breaking without anyone noticing. Which defeats the purpose of using it. Two condoms. There's more friction and a better chance of breaking. Sounds worse, right? Wrong, you gotta do it right. After you put on the first condom, you fill the second with ghost pepper salsa and put it on over the first. This way, if either condom breaks, one of you is gonna know immediately. Welcome to Sex Ed 101. Beaches. A guy can just cry and scrub that off. Can you imagine being a woman and having that up in there? Duck. That. Swans. They evil. Geese. Two. One chased me up a tree once. Duckers. I get chased by geese every now and then. All you have to do is raise your arms out, lean towards them, and yell really loud. That usually sends them scampering. Marcellus Wallace. Mr. Wallace doesn't like getting ducked by anyone except Mrs. Wallace. Just so I don't do it by mistake, what does Marcellus Wallace look like? The ladies at the DMV. Not sure about other states but in NJ. You do as you're told and don't ever sass them in any way. You're just asking for trouble. The longer the nails, the less they'll tolerate. Some say their nails grow longer when they smell your fear. Badgers. They will duck your shit up. Edit. Wolverine equals badger on roids. Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers. If you're traveling never duck with the locals. I've seen people pick fights with one of the locals and 10 of his buddies came out from every shop around them. A skinny white guy walking not only very casually, but also very comfortably through a rough neighborhood. Do you know from personal experience? The space-time continuum. Seriously folks, leave it alone. What if I randomly end up stuck in the 1940s, accidentally get my grandfather killed, and my grandma in her grief-stricken state comes onto me? Then do the nasty in the pasty. Giant hogweed the sap is dangerous, and reacts to laid but violently to human skin, so you may not notice exposure at first, then this happens, and don't burn it without chemical protective gear, you don't want to breathe that into your lungs. To clarify, getting the sap on your skin makes the skin hypersensitive to sunlight. The photos of skin you posted are the result of photophotodermatitis, chemically induced sunburn. So, if you do get it on you, get out of the sun immediately. Interestingly the same is true of lime juice. This happened to me a couple of years ago, squeezing limes at a barbecue to make limeade. I went out in the garden for a couple of hours. 24 hours later my hands had gone deep red and started swelling. 48 hours later I had huge blisters and my hands looked like I was wearing thick gloves. Went away after 72 hours but was a nasty experience all round. Look it up. Fit off to dermatitis. Be aware. The war. Do you duck with the war? Beach don't know about Pam gear? Drugs. My brother left behind a 6 year old because he made the choice to use. I miss him and I wish he had never made that decision. Edit. I really didn't expect this to explode. Thank you for everyone who has been supportive. Those of you who have gone through similar experiences. I'm so sorry and you can message me anytime. Another edit. He used heroin. That's mainly the one I'm talking about but I think most of you know I'm not talking about alcohol or pot or caffeine. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men don't do meth. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Anyone who just woke up. Also my mom when she's playing Sudoku. Never bother her. Basically anything that moves in Australia. Did you see the comment about the Jimpy Jimpy plant? Even the things that don't move probably shouldn't be messed with. Samoans. I know a Samoan bouncer. Two guys started to fight. He yelled sit down they did. On the floor. Right there. He is about 6 foot 6. And about that wide too. I'm just picturing Maui as a bouncer. Asbestos because it leads to, wait for it, mesothelioma. But, 
How else can I possibly be entitled to financial compensation? Pai Mai. Unless you really, really want to learn how the 5 point palm exploding heart technique works. A man loading unloading a U-Haul van. Their mind, soul, and body are united in one singular, burning thought. Duck this bullshit. I would warn God himself not to give the man in the van a reason to go off on him. A bear with chainsaw hands. The really quiet people who sit in the corner. I would think some of them would enjoy a good duck. Prescriptions. If you've been prescribed 3 tablets a day for 4 weeks, take 3 tablets a day for 4 weeks. There's a reason you're given the amount of medication you are. Even if you start to feel better, don't stop taking them until you run out. Edit. It's been brought to my attention that this doesn't apply to everything. I'm nowhere near an authority on this. But I guess just. Don't screw around with prescribed medication. Someone with a knife. Ignore everything you've ever read about self-defense. You're gonna get cut. A lot. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.